Yeah. Well, there's all these different values in this system. If you cover a girl, you're going to create problems. So I went to the South Seas when I was 21, and I lived on the island of two Tuamotu, the wild, chain of islands, near Tahiti, French territory. Everybody on the island was nude, except when men climbed trees, they wore kind of a jock strap to prevent their balls from being caught. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody walked around nude. And the interesting thing about it is I never saw a native stare at a girl's body, only her eyes, when he talked to a woman. You know, yeah, get a lot of that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the civilization to cover the girl. If people swam nude when they were this high, you couldn't sell pictures of a nude girl. Do you understand that? It's when you cover them up, because it's like curiosity. No kid in the islands was a peeping Tom, because everybody walked around nude. You couldn't sell a magazine, a girly magazine. You couldn't run a pornographic movie, it would have no meaning. They made love when they were able to. And nobody was shot or not. Interesting thing, I get to know the natives so well, I watch them make love. They stroked the whole female, the top of the head, all the way down. They had no fetishes. They were no tick and leg and that, but all that's made by culture. And if you don't use that kind of language around women, you can't become equal to one another. So you have to tell them how men think. That isn't how they think. That's how they're brought up. When guys poke each other, they get a load of that trick, you know. <laughs> that is the culture. In the islands, they never did that. It's like you, stroking a dog. You stroke the whole dog. You don't stop at the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first we want to 
do a major motion picture, as we talked in terms of implementation, we're going back and forth, they all agree. We want to do a major motion picture to show what life could be like in the future, show what we're missing, because most people have no idea. We look at it as kind of um, therapy for, for transition, social therapy for transition. And we'd like people to walk out of that film and say, well, why don't we do this today? At the end of the film, we'd like to show that we're breaking ground on the first city. We'd like to build the first city. And in the first city, we would have the planners for the next city and people who are making um, all sorts of media, books, videos, gaming, everything to introduce this, this direction. Because it's really an educational system. An educational problem at this time. They have to understand it. It's not that they, we could just build a city and then have people move in. They don't have a good understanding of this. So this is what we need. We see how we need to go. And we have the first city, and people from all over the world would come, and then hopefully build another city in in their country and go on like that. Um, could you talk a little bit? Um, could you talk more about the technologies that would be used um, for the cities beneath the ocean um, to deal with the pressures and other things that you may want to talk about? What, what's it for? They're not cities under the ocean, that's a mistake. The cities of the sea are designed to restore the reefs. Well, I said we've done 65 tons of no gas to clean out all the ships pump their bills into the ocean. You can't keep doing that without destroying the ocean environment. And the Japanese are overfishing, according to some countries. They're overfishing because they can sell it. But, and, and in Africa, natives are killing animals. They're called butchers. If you don't supply food for them, and they have no access to food, they're going to be poachers, whatever they can do to get by. Well, exactly how, how what, some of the structures you've shown on your, uh, your video at the start, there's, there's some building some structures on the... Well, you have to put the mic up there. Sorry. My the observation is sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but more exactly, how would you do it? How how can you how can you build in, in, in these sorts of remote places of the actual technology that we use? I, I understand the social implications, but more, more the actual the kind of physics of it. Well, we have multi-deck agriculture hanging under the cities of the sea. And there are many things you can grow in salt water, food. And then we would build a hydroponics farm in the city. Hydroponics is soilless agriculture. Where areas of the earth do not have arable land, we will build hydroponic farms, soilless agriculture. And we will, instead of sending packages of food or to to Africa or India, what we would do is dehydrate the food, take the fluids out, so that a vat this size will feed many people. So the technology of the future is to keep sonar running through the oceans, all through the oceans. The American military already has sonar in most of the oceans to detect enemy submarines. So we will use sonar for Tsunami. If you get a big wave, it notifies every land around there that a tsunami will be there in five hours, or two hours, you understand? But if a tsunami occurs suddenly, there's a, I don't even understand this, there's a concrete wedge in the ocean, a half a mile away from the island, and that parts the waters so it doesn't do damage. But building a dam in front of the whole island is the only way, the wrong way. It's good for contractors building a dam. Yes. Uh, sorry. Hi, uh, do you think it's possible to make a peaceful transition to this economy, say through one industry at a time? Or does the system have to completely fail before it's possible? We don't think there's enough time for people to make a peaceful transition. That's just not where they're at. They're not 